In this video, we're going to talk about necessary and sufficient conditions. Now, the word necessary and the word sufficient we use all the time in just everyday English usage, but in this video, we're going to analyze their precise mathematical meaning. And they're going to be two of the most important kinds of logical conditions that we're going to see in mathematics. So, here's the idea. Look at these three different shapes, squares, rectangles, and quadrilaterals. And quadrilaterals are shapes that just have four sides, but they don't nicely fit together the way squares and rectangles do. If I was particularly interested in trying to deduce that what I was given was a rectangle, the question is, what does knowing that it's a square or knowing that it's a quadrilateral do to the fact that I want to deduce a rectangle? So, Let's focus for a moment just on the squares and rectangles, because we know that there's a relationship between those two. In particular, all squares are going to have to be rectangles. And notice that this doesn't work the other way around. It's not the case that all rectangles are squares, because some rectangles aren't squares, but all squares are indeed going to be rectangles. We can also replace this sort of colloquial language of the all squares are rectangles with a little bit more mathematically precise language saying, if x is a square, then I get that x is going to be a rectangle. So this is writing it explicitly as a conditional statement. Now, the fact that we're talking about squares and rectangles here, this is just a specific example for this video, but the general logical structure we have is if some initial property, x is a square, but I'm going to call that a of x, then some final property, b of x, in this case, x being a rectangle. And the way I want to think about this is that if I'm given the first thing, it must be the case that I get the second. As in, if I want to conclude the second, it is sufficient for me to conclude the first. And so therefore, I say that this is a sufficient condition. And what I mean by this is that if I have the first one, I automatically get the, the second. It is enough for me to know the first to be able to get the second. Now, it's worth noting here that there might be other ways I could get to the second without having the first. So for example, if I interpret the statement in our example, it's something like this. x being a square, that's my a of x, is sufficient to conclude that x is a rectangle. However, I don't have to have it be a square in order to get a rectangle. It could be something else, but might still be a rectangle. So that's why I refer to it as being it is a sufficient property. But next, we're going to have to turn to the idea of what is a necessary property. That's going to deal with the other way around. So let's go back to our picture with our square, our rectangle, and our quadrilateral. And again, we're trying to conclude the middle one. We're trying to conclude the rectangle. But here I want to focus just on the rectangle and the quadrilateral. Now, we can have a relationship as we've seen before. In particular, we can say, if it's a rectangle, then we get it be a quadrilateral. And it's not true the other way around. There are shapes that are four-sided, that are quadrilaterals, that are not rectangles. So this, again, only works in the one direction. The general form being expressed here can be written as if b of x, remember from before, b of x was the symbol we used for our rectangle, then quadrilateral, which is a new thing, I'm going to put it then c of x. So again, it's another conditional, another implication. However, I want to do something a little bit tricky. I want to write this statement in its contrapositive form. And the way that a contrapositive worked is that you took the rectangle and the quadrilateral, and then you switch their order. The if x is and the then x is part, that just remained where it was. But, but by switching the order, we also had to add in two noughts. So I'm claiming that this is the contrapositive of what I had previously. And it says that if it's not a quadrilateral, then it's not a rectangle. And that's logically equivalent to saying if it's a rectangle, then it has to be a quadrilateral. Now, the logical structure here in its counterpositive form is going to look like this. Remember, quadrilateral was the c of x. So we're saying if not c of x, then not b of x. Now, here's what I think. It is mandatory that I have my shape being a quadrilateral if I ever hope to have it being a rectangle. I have to have it being a quadrilateral. Or another way of saying it, is that it is necessary to have the property of c of x, the, the second one, 
in order for me to have b of x. In the language of quadrilaterals and rectangles, this says it is necessary for it to be a quadrilateral in order to conclude that it's going to be a rectangle. So let's go back to our three shapes. And it's worth noting that again, focusing on the rectangle is a thing I want to conclude. That's what my hope is, is that squares and quadrilaterals both had a relationship with rectangles, but a slightly different one. For the square, we said it was enough. It was sufficient to have a square if we wanted to conclude that we had a rectangle. But for the quadrilateral case, it was necessary that we had this. So sufficient that we had a square, but didn't need it to be a square. Mandatory or necessary that we have a quadrilateral, but in fact we need more than just a quadrilateral in order to do that it's a rectangle. And of course squares and rectangles and quadrilaterals here, this is just my specific example, we can make the more general case by having a nested chain, one property implies the b of x, the b of x implies a third property, c of x. And that anything that has this relationship, if we're interested in concluding the middle thing, the former one is gonna be the sufficient condition and the latter one is going to be the necessary one. Finally, I want to note that all of this crucially depended on my assertion that what we care about was that middle goal, that we wanted to deduce the b of x or that we wanted to deduce that it was a rectangle. If I just have one implication, a of x implies b of x, well, I can get both a necessary and a sufficient condition out of here, but it changes what my goal is. So for instance, the a of x, the first one, is a sufficient condition to conclude the b of x. That's what we've seen before. But suppose my goal is not to deduce the b of x, suppose my goal is to deduce the a of x, then I could say that the b of x was a necessary condition for the a of x. In other words, if I want to get the a of x, I have to have the b of x, that's necessary. And if I want to get the b of x, it's just sufficient for me to have the a of x. In a specific example with our squares and rectangles again, the first we've seen already, a square is a sufficient condition to be a rectangle. But let me suppose that now I want to deduce that it's a square, in that case, what does a rectangle mean? Well. Having a rectangle is a necessary condition for being a square.